Welcome everyone to the Eve Growing Concept. This video is going to be uh, a video that combines the whole aspect of vermenting, the different steps for all of our new subscribers to our vermenting Facebook group. It's to show them so they don't have to go through all the different videos I've already done. This is going to be a ba basic step of how we deal with our house compost and fermenting. Know that there's different ways that you can do it. And um, it, this fermenting is more of a process rather th than the container used. And I know I said in my Facebook link there that um, I was going to go back to the two bucket system. And I'm not so sure I'm going to do that for a couple reasons that I'm going to talk about in this video. I want to thank everybody who has joined the group. Welcome. Um, we're all new here, so, um, you know, you're not newbies. We're all newbies at it, okay? And um, know that fermenting is just the arm of the whole Eve growing concept that we'll be talking more about in upcoming videos. Growing vertically using composted soil as our growing medium. Every grow tower is a living world we tried where we try to mimic mother earth's best growing condition okay so again i want to thank you for joining my fermenting group i want to thank you for subscribing to my youtube channel and let's get started let's talk about the fermenting bin first and foremost i think one bucket is ultimately the way to go now there's pros and cons with using two buckets or one bucket but let's go with the one bucket here and notice how i just have a simple um salad dressing container with a bunch of holes poked through with an electric poker and I burnt a couple of a little holes in there so the drainage can go through and notice here that I don't even have an internal aeration tube I'm not too sure you even need that but I use it because I'm I just feel comfortable using it but this is basically that setup I just showed you a picture of it and it worked just as well as two buckets the only problem is you have to have the drainage on the outside but I think um that works better too in the long run. So basically this has been fermenting for 53 days. I accidentally opened this up when I was opening a bunch of other fermenting bins and um, they, it wasn't quite complete. These were composting balls. Now composting balls are pure comp minced compost. So it would take a little longer for this because there's a lot of compost in one ball. The worms did go in it I think this would have to go another month before it was really complete, but it doesn't matter. The eight week period works good because the stuff that isn't finished is gonna go back into the new fermenting bin. And when you use composting rolls, it's mostly just newspaper left over. And that goes right to the bottom of my fermenting bin. But right here, I had a lot of the moist composting balls that I think were a little too moist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to layer it in here and that was, brings up another question that we had on our Facebook page of, you think you can just layer it like a lasagna and um, would that work as well? And again, this is what I'm doing here. I'm putting some carbon newspaper down. It, 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 if I just place some minced compost in there without rolling it up and then added another layer of newspaper or carbon over that, that might work just as well as rolling it into a composting ball. Um, first of all, there is no rules at this stage of the game because it's all trial and error and testing it. And so far, I, I've, I've had great results with composting rolls, mincing it up, rolling it up into a composting roll and putting it in there and layering it like this here, similar to this. And instead of the carbon, I was using um, duff as my, uh, my in-between different composting rolls. So this works good. This is one bucket. It's um, very easy to make under a dollar easily. And we had another question in our Facebook link on grommets. And I'll put a link below there. We had another guy named Mark who had a great suggestion with um, the grommets, which it was, it was like, uh, I think, 50 for $10, which is an amazing price. If they work, I've not used them yet. I haven't ordered it yet, but as soon as I need more grommets, I'll be do I'll be trying that because it turns this fermenting bin into less than a dollar. So don't be, in my personal opinion, guys, don't be buying these expensive worm farms. Fermenting in a bucket can easily compete with these, I feel, and I think in the long run it's a lot easier. Let's go through the power composting aspect of it. 
My family and I compost everything. If it's organic, it goes into this six gallon bucket that's in our kitchen. There's no smell to this bucket and all our liquid as well. Coffee remains, hot pasta water, um, even urine goes into that bucket at times. And that slurry goes right into our sink where I then compost it using a garbage disposal or an incinerator. I think mine is like three horsepower and it works very well. Get the most powerful garbage disposal you can think of because you're going to want to break down everything. The only thing that I have a hard time breaking down is ribs, steak bones, and stuff like that. But my next garbage disposal, when I can uh, get the funds to do it, I'm going to get a very powerful composter. And you know, there's another guy named Thomas, as I said in other videos, who calls it composting companion. And it's very important, guys. Look at all the stuff that people in, in urban settings, we all have garbage disposals for the most part. And this organic matter is going right out to our sewers, where we have our municipals taking care of something we should be doing on our own. And it makes me wonder, you know, like cancer, when we think of people who work on cancer, if they really want to have a cure for it because there's so much money to be made. I'm thinking with our these municipals who deal with our personal organic outputs and all this stuff that goes into the sewers, if they really want an alternative solution because um, there's money to be made at treating human waste and human garbage and stuff like that. There's so much money to be made that nobody wants to think of a, a different way of doing it. And ultimately, if we want to live off the grid, and especially in urban settings, if we want to live off the grid, we're going to need to take care of our own organics, depending what they are. We're going to need to have to grow our own food. We have to be less dependent on the municipals and government. We need to start taking care of our own stuff. And fermenting, of course, is a great way to do that. Let's not send all this organic matter into our sewer system where it is treated with um, all kinds of different chemicals. Who knows what these chemicals are doing ultimately? And when we have a flood, all the sewers get flooded and all the stuff goes out onto our landscape as well. Very gross as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, let's get, off, let's get back to power composting here. We minced it up with our, our, our power composter, our garbage disposal, and we take that liquid slurry and we take out the liquid using a five gallon paint strainer. These paint strainers, by the way, I get them at Lowe's and or Home Depot or some any box store, paint store, and they're very rugged. They last a lot, a long time. I've, I've used these two bags here for a long time. Right now I'm cleaning out my bucket with a key card or a credit card, gift card, used gift card. They work very well. Very little maintenance going on when after the fermenting cycle, when it comes time to cleaning it out, your fermenting bin, very easy to clean. So we drained out all the liquid. We let it sit for two, three days works great to let all that liquid come out. You still want some moisture in your compost because that adds the moisture um, to the bin that the worms so need. So right now I'm scraping off all this uh, organic matter that's seeped through my um, paint strainer with a credit card. Better to do it while it's full because it's harder to get that stuff off after the fact. And notice too, when I did have it sitting, I have that net on top of there. So no flies get in and breed in my um, compost, my mince compost. And of course, like a dub, I didn't take that screen off so now i have to dump it out of that screen but i put a screen on top of that as it's sitting because you don't want any fleas laying their eggs because they will get into your fermenting bin but they won't get out because of course with fermenting nothing gets in nothing gets out with total aeration going throughout the container and as you can see right now i'm making composting rolls which i feel is an amazing tool for herbing growing because it's a great way to self-harvest these red wigglers. If you bury these in your flower planters um, or in your garden to collect more red wigglers, because the worms will go in these if you just put them. I, I, I have a, a hole in a bucket that I bury in my garden that I put uh, um, some composting rolls and the worms do go in there. And that's a great way to get your reds as well, to get more reds to add to your, your vermiculture farm. 
So many ways. I, I've never bought a worm in my life. I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy worms because I'm sure there's places where you have a hard time getting reds. And when you want to start this whole awesome vermenting process, you want to get your worms as fast as you can. At this time, I'm not selling reds. It's all experimental for me right now. So now I'm packing another bin. And I'm going to go through the steps to show you how I'm going to pack these composting rolls. Now, see this aeration tube going through here? Uh, we're going to be doing another video on how to make th these um, aeration tubes and what works best. Notice the top tubes is just Coke bottle tops that I cut off with their caps. And th these work very well. I was using grommets. But now that I don't need to do that, our build for this whole system becomes literally, literally free. To the point it's under 50 cents now that we can get our grommets a lot cheaper, which is kind of exciting. Because again, if you're buying these expensive worm farms, I, I don't mean to wreck somebody's business. But vermenting works better than them, and I'm willing to put that up to the test. And you guys that do vermiculture can easily make this. I've showed you how to make these fermenting bins. I hope that you'll be honest to say the pros and cons. We're not looking just for the positive. We're looking for the negative too, the negative aspects that we can talk about because this is about open sourcing and all of us breaking down our organic matter so we can all lessen our ecological footprint on the planet, right? That's what it's all about. And of course, if we can make a, a great soil ab amendment while we're doing it, that's what fermenting is all about. You add a couple thousand reds to this, and the more you add, the faster it'll go. It depends on what you're fermenting. I want to tell you here, and we're going to do, be, be doing more videos, human ore works the best, believe it or not. These reds um, attack these um, human ore rolls these personal organic output rolls and from inside to out and when you're done you get tons more eggs and you have nothing but fluff left there's no smell i could lay lay this out fermenting out when it's all complete and there'll be no flies that want to go in there because there's nothing that they would want so you pack it add your reds cap it and don't forget to date it because you shouldn't have to mess with it until the opening date if done right. And of course, multiple worm farms can be stacked in tight, small areas, apartments and condos. You can have a whole worm farm. Get your whole apartment complex to give you your organic matter and you will turn that into amazing worm castings. This has been a video to show all the newcomers to our Facebook group all the different steps in one video. And once again... Fermenting is another arm of the Eve growing concept. And like fermenting, Eve is designed specifically for urban living, where we compete with the other non-traditional growing methods, hydroponics, aquaponics, and aeroponics, while staying true to traditional gardening as we compost, recycle, and reuse. So that's it, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I look forward to doing more with you. Please subscribe if you like, and we'll literally grow up together. That's all I have to say for now. God bless. Over and out.